Hi, welcome to Linguistics 101 Online, Winter 2017, Section 850. Uh, this course is called Introduction to Linguistic Analysis, so we will look at how to analyze language as social scientists, focusing on sound and sound patterns, word structure, phrase structure, and semantic patterns. Uh, this video is a quick introduction to how the course will be run this term, what you, you can expect in terms of resources to help you learn the material and everything. So, I'm your instructor, Tim Mills. You can call me Tim or Dr. Mills. Uh, technically, I'm not a professor. I'm a contract instructor, not tenure-track researcher. Uh, I have been teaching the on-campus version of this course for four years, and I'm really happy to be teaching this first online offering of the course here at the University of Alberta. Uh, I've been studying linguistics since 1995. I studied at the University of Calgary and in Scotland at the University of Edinburgh and I've also done some research as a linguist in Boston. All right, so for this course, one of the most important documents in any university course is the syllabus. Uh, you can access our syllabus through the eClass site for this course. Uh, you use your CCID and password to get into eClass, then find this course. Uh, the syllabus and a lot of the other documents that I'll be talking about are uh, shared through Google Drive, and they're shared based on uh, your uh, Google ID. Your CC ID is, a, among other things, a Google account. So if you click a link and it says you don't have access, you can't access this, it might be that it's not recognizing you at, as that Google ID that you need to be. So uh, you can, there's usually a link when you get that error, say sign in as a different user and then use your University of Alberta ID. So your Google ID is ccid at ualberta.ca and then it'll give you the right login. Anyway, so uh, the syllabus. Uh, and the syllabus <coughs> contains all the key information about uh, the administration of the course. It has uh, contact information for your instructor, dates and weights of quizzes and the final exam, information about the textbook, uh, and so on. Uh, in this video I'll spend just a little time going through the, the high points. Uh, so, first of all, as an online class, uh, most of your studying here will be done on your own, but it's not really a self-paced class. Uh, the quiz closing each module is on a set date, so you can get done the material whenever you want, but that quiz is going to be on a set date, no matter how far ahead or behind you are. Uh, you'll be able to access the quiz uh, for a given module any time that day, from midnight to midnight, Edmonton time. And Edmonton time is Mountain Standard Time until March 12th, and then from March 12th on it's Mountain Daylight Time. Uh, the first module is a little bit short, so its quiz is only worth 5% of your grade, but the uh, remaining quizzes are each worth 10% of your grade. Uh, and because you're doing them online from wherever you choose, uh, you can treat them as open book quizzes. Uh, I do encourage you to try out the self-test quiz uh, things beforehand. These aren't worth marks, but they will give you a sense of how the quizzes work uh, and also hopefully a sense of how well you know the material, what you might still need to study before the quiz. Okay, uh, each quiz worth marks uh, gives you 60 minutes from when you start it to when you finish it. Uh, if you start less than an hour before midnight, then you'll have less time. It closes at midnight or after 60 minutes, whichever is sooner. Uh, these quizzes aren't hour-long quizzes. They shouldn't take you an hour long. I'm designing them to take no longer than half an hour, ideally. Uh, I just don't like unduly constraining you for time. The final exam is worth 45% of your grade, almost half of it. Uh, it's also delivered through eClass, but it's not open book. It's not just a regular quiz that happens to be bigger. Uh, you'll need a special browser to access it. I have information on eClass. Uh, this browser prevents you from viewing other applications or websites while you're doing the exam. <clears throat> and uh, you will also have an invigilator, a human being in the room with you, making sure that you don't use paper notes or other devices at the same time. Okay, uh, there's a lot of uh, practice exams available and whatnot to help you uh, get ready for the final exam. Because this is the first online offering, I don't have a lot of online final exam material to sort of review and, and practice with. Uh, but I will do my best, because it's the same course, I will do my best to make the online examination uh, parallel, comparable to the 
uh, on the pen and paper examination that we do for on-campus courses. If you're in Edmonton, you can have your exam and your final exam invigilated by me. I'll book a computer lab at the university where we can do this. Uh, so let me know, you know, as soon as possible during the term so that I know how big a lab that we need uh, if this is something that you're going to want. If you're not in Edmonton, you will need to find an invigilator in your area who can supervise the exam. Ideally, this invigilator will be uh, someone who works at a local college or university. Uh, it absolutely must not be a friend or family member and the invigilator will be signing a very official document uh, certifying that they are eligible and that you behaved yourself during the exam, essentially. If you have any questions, oh, by the way, the, the university doesn't pay for invigilators, so if they say they charge a fee, that's going to be up to you, unfortunately. Uh, if you have any questions about securing uh, an invigilator local to you, if you're not sure how you're going to do that, just let me know as soon as possible and I can, I'll do what I can to help you uh, sort it out. Right. So, in terms of learning the material, uh, there's another key document on E-Class, and that's the learning outcomes document. And this lists line by line all of the things that I intend to teach you during the course through the videos and other materials I'm about to tell you about, uh, and all of the things that I will examine you on in quizzes and on the final exam. So it's kind of the Bible of course content. Uh, in terms of how you can learn the material. Uh, there are a bunch of video lectures. Uh, these are still in process as I record this introductory video, but my uh, intention is that by the time each module finishes, there will be all the videos you need for the following module available on eClass, and I'll get them done as early uh, and uh, efficiently as possible for you. Uh, they're still under development, so if a video seems really weird or unclear to you or something, let me know and it may be that I need to re-record it. Uh, okay. Uh, so what else do I have? Yeah. So in addition to the videos, which is sort of me gabbing at you, uh, there may be some screencasts where you can see things happening on my screen that I'm talking about. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I have several written documents going through each module in similar detail, but you know you talk differently on paper than you do in person, so it'll present the material in a slightly different way. Uh, so these are also available on eClass. And finally, there is a required textbook. Now I do the air quotes because it's officially required because this is the standard textbook across all sections of Ling 101 in our department. Uh, but I don't teach straight from the textbook. I teach from that learning outcomes document. Uh, and I don't go over all the exercises or questions at the end of each chapter in the textbook uh, in you know the graded portion of the, the class. It is a high quality textbook, but it costs over $100, and I'm not confident that students get over $100 value out of it in this class. If you intend to go on in linguistics, you know I still use my copy of the same textbook. It's, you know, five or six editions back, but the same textbook, uh, it's still on my shelf as a professional uh, research uh, and teaching linguist. Uh, so it's a good, solid textbook, but like I say, if this is the only class, uh, linguistics class, you ever intend to take, you might not get your money's worth, so I don't require it. Uh, there are some resources on eClass that specifically are based on the textbook, you know, links where you have to have the textbook in order to follow the link. Um, if you don't have the textbook, you don't get to use those links, but they aren't any part of the required material. Uh, it's just uh, supplementary. <clears throat> Alright, so the t syllabus does have more information than what I've talked about. Things about academic honesty, you know, don't cheat. It's not that complicated, but we need to include it. About the exact schedule of the modules, when each module begins and ends, when each quiz is exactly by date. Uh, they're all on a Friday. Um, and about the normal percentage to letter grade conversions used in this course. So at the end of the class, whatever your weighted grade is, or weighted percent mark is, gets translated into a grade according to that table. Uh, that table isn't fixed in stone. If something happens where something turns out to have been much more difficult than I intended, according to my judgment, not just according to how well people do, um, then I might shift those, those cutoffs a little bit. Um, anyway, I'm not going to recite all of that, those details in this video, but I do encourage you, please do read the full syllabus. The syllabus is kind of, it's a sort of contract between me and you. It's, it's very central to how the course is run. Uh, when you have a question about how the course is run, check the syllabus before you ask me. 
uh, if the answer is in there and you ask me, I'm just going to point you back to the syllabus anyway. So looking there first saves us both time. Uh, if you have a question about the course material, a comment, anything like that, uh, there are a lot of ways to communicate with me about this. Uh, first off, there's the discussion forums. Each module in the course has a discussion forum and there's a general discussion forum for stuff that doesn't fit into any of those. Uh, posts are tracked by thread. Anyone in the course, all the students and I will all see the posts. Anyone can respond to them. I, I'm happy for students to respond to other students' questions. I will certainly monitor and make sure that any confusion or misunderstanding is sorted up as quickly as possible. Uh, second, you can email me uh, and I aim to answer questions on email or on the forum within a day or so of receiving them. Uh, if someone emails me a question that I think belongs on the forum, I will post it as a question on the forum with me as the author. I won't out anyone else. So-and-so doesn't know the answer. To that. I won't do that. Uh, I, but I will post the question and the answer on the forum if I think that'll be useful to other students. Um, so that's the, the forum and, and I really like uh, use of the form. I encourage use of the forms, but of course you can always email me, you know, if it's something personal about your particular marks or about uh, the administration, then, then, you know, that's an appropriate way to communicate with me. Uh, and third, I will hold office hours. Uh, the times are on the syllabus. If you're on campus, uh, you can come to my office at that time on campus. Uh, if not, you can go to the chat room, and the chat room is on eClass as everything else is. Uh, and this chat room is only open and available to people who are registered in this section of this class. Uh, the chat room is actually open all the time. It's just always open. Uh, so if you want to chat with each other outside of my office hours, you can do that. I will be on the chat room during my office hours and potentially by appointment. Uh, if you want to talk to me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, not through the chat, but through uh, Skype or Hangout, Google Hangout or something like that, then we can arrange that as well. Uh, just email me. Uh, I should point out that the chat utility retains a record of all the messages posted to chat. So if it's something that you're pretty sure you don't want me to ever be able to read, don't put it on the chat. Um, right. <clears throat> so finally, uh, so I know that a lot of people who take Linguistics 101 are just doing it to pick up an option or boost their GPA, and that's fine. If you work hard and learn the material, there's no reason why you won't get the option and boost your GPA. Uh, my goal is uh, to convey some understanding of how to think about language scientifically uh, and also to express my rather sometimes excessive enthusiasm for all things linguistic. Uh, any of you who don't want to go on uh, to more linguistics courses, that's fine. You don't have to uh, catch my enthusiasm. Uh, but if you do, if you do have more linguistics in your future, uh, either more options because you think it's interesting or because this course inspires you to take a bit more, or because you have a ling language related, linguistics related career in mind like speech therapy, um, this course is the foundation of everything else, right? We don't cover every, we don't sample every topic in linguistics here. We don't talk, for example, about language acquisition or uh, clinical approaches to language. Uh, but everything else you learn is going to build on uh, one or another uh, or several aspects of what we cover in this class. Um, if you have questions that aren't really related to the stuff we're talking about in this class, but are obviously about linguistics, or generally or vaguely about linguistics, uh, or they're sort of language-related jokes, puns, linguists are suckers for puns, uh, email me those too or post them on the forums or whatever, that's, that's great. I am uh, a real sucker for any enthusiasm about language-related stuff. Um, I want to remind you also that uh, grades aren't curved in this class. That's mentioned in the syllabus. I want to make it clear. This means that, uh, first of all, if you help out your students and they do better, that doesn't uh, negatively impact your final grade, you know, the letter grade, the GPA that you're going to end up with. It'll probably end up helping it because you get this positive feedback within the class. Uh, it also means that if every single one of you in this class 
works hard, demonstrates an excellent understanding of the material when uh, doing the quizzes in the final exam, you can all get an A. I'm really curious how the university administration would react. I don't know. It hasn't actually happened across four years of uh, teaching here, uh, even though I invite every class to, you know, let's see what they would do. Uh, so I'd be most grateful if you guys would help me out with this, if each and every one of you gets an A, and we'll see what happens at the university administration level. I'm really curious. Anyway, uh, I think that covers all the introductory stuff that I want to uh, get into this video, so let's uh, get into the course. See you guys online.